Well, good morning, and welcome to worship. This is a special day. We don't often get to celebrate the sacrament of baptism in the church years these days, but I have heard a rumor that there's a Mateo here. Oh, thank you. I just got a wave with one hand and two feet. Welcome. It's a special day, and we'll have some special music. I always feel compelled on Baptism Sundays to create a kind of depth of community and a depth of spirit that's even a little bit more special. Now, I had some interesting conversations with people this week about why, why do we do church? And people gave a lot of answers, but the one thing that undergirded all of them was a sense of the holy. The sense of the holiness of community, a sense of the holiness of sacred music, a sense of the holiness of liturgy. For some people, it's the holiness of social justice, we, which we get energized for here, and then we take out. So as I light the candle, what I'd like you to do is to take a couple of deep breaths and ask yourself, what's most holy to you? And as you breathe into the space, try to pour into the space among us and between us what you hold to be most holy, most sacred, so that we create as sacred a circle as possible for this ritual that welcomes Mateo. So let's do that. Oh, Jesus is saying, give them lots of time to think about it. Now I want, as we move to the land acknowledgement, to ask you to engage your faculty of imagination again. I'm not going to say a land acknowledgement. Again, I've been privy to a number of conversations in recent weeks, and I've seen in the media a number of Indigenous people say, it's time for us to move beyond the virtue signaling of land acknowledgements into deeper right relations with the Indigenous peoples of this land. And so let's take another 30 seconds or so of silence and imagine what it would be if we moved beyond, what would it look like here on this land if we went beyond acknowledging into sacrificing and moving into deeper dialogue and the transformation of our society. Beloveds, please join me in our responsive call to worship. 
When God tripped over the stars this week and sent great lightning sparks across the, the night, God's name was power. When God pours water this morning and asks us to find heaven in every drop, God's name is grace. When God shook us awake today and hollowed out an unused moment in front of us to step into, God's name is creator. When God found us waiting here in the space between heaven and earth, now and not yet, God's name is love. Friends, let us worship the God of many names. Let us pray. Gentle and disturbing God, you have called us to this place. You have called us to be a community of faith. In our struggles, hold us together. In our celebrating, be our joy. In our serving, may we do so abundantly. In the name of Jesus, we make this prayer. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning begins at the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Our second scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, verse, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. These are the words of life, which in faith become the living word. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So at the end of the moment of baptism, I covered our font back up. 
But I'm going to open it up here and keep this water a little more accessible in this time together. This water that our children warmed, this water that was splashed on Mateo's head, this water that reminds us of all of the waters of life. We are cradled in water before our birth, and we rely on it for our survival throughout our lives. Water is central to every cell and fiber in our bodies. In many ways, water is the common denominator for all forms of life, for plants, animals, even the tiniest of microbes. And so in this way, water is the ultimate connector. Water through breath connects you to the person sitting beside you, which caused us quite a lot of worry over the past few years, didn't it? Water connects you to everyone in this building. It is indeed a living unifier. Water also carries with it the history of the earth. Each source of water tastes different from all others. Each source holds different lives in balance. And so how could water not play a crucial role in Jesus' new start? How could it not play a crucial role in the sacrament that would mark the beginning of his ministry? Today, as we've marked Mateo with this water through baptism, we hear the stories of the creation of the waters from Genesis and of Jesus' baptism, which Ellen has just shared with us. Through Matthew's gospel, the second reading, we hear about John refusing at first to baptize Jesus, but how Jesus convinces him otherwise. We hear about Jesus in the water and about the Holy Spirit descending that moment of spirit saying to Jesus, you are my beloved. We know that this story and this day are important. This story that marks the beginning of Jesus' ministry when he went under the water a man from Bethlehem and came back up the Christ. We also know it's important because since that day, we too have been practicing this sacred act of renewal through our own sacrament of baptism. We too have been invited to participate in our own ways in this sacred moment. And we too mark a new beginning each time that we use water as a sign of the holy. And although in the United Church, we don't necessarily believe that this is the exact moment that the Holy Spirit first enters our lives, we believe that Matteo has been in relationship with God since long before today, but we do know that this is an important moment where we, as members of our communities, through water, make promises to Mateo, to mark Mateo with God together. While my own baptism as a baby is an event I don't remember, and that's likely the case for many of you as well, there are also moments in our lives where we're invited to remember in whatever way we can, or to feel anew the power of this sacrament. I had an encounter, an experience in 2014 myself that left me transformed. It was during the time that I spent in Palestine and Israel, which I've spoken about recently on other Sundays, but there was one of those days during that trip when our group had the opportunity to visit the Jordan River. That's the day that we lugged around all those bottles of water that I've been lugging around with me ever since. This is the site where it is believed that Jesus was baptized, this story which Ellen shared with us. The water in this part of the Jordan, it's shallow. 
It's pretty murky. Luckily, the sediments had many years to settle in those water bottles that I keep in my office. So the water is clear that we poured in to the font today. The river in this place, it's narrow. Just a few feet over, you can see across into Jordan. It's a pretty unassuming place. But somehow, in this simplest of spots, I had the chance to enter into the murky waters and remember my own baptism. Remember what in some ways was unrememberable. But wading into the Jordan, I was reminded that there is indeed something in that moment of each of our baptisms that propels us out of ourselves and into somehow new selves. New selves marked by community. Even if we can't remember it ourselves, this is a renewed moment each time that we then witness the baptism of another or have the chance to reaffirm our own baptismal vows. I've always been moved by the act of baptism. Something about what we are doing today, gathering together and saying, Mateo, we promise to love you and care for you and cherish you. That's always moved me. Many, many times when I've witnessed a baptism, it's moved me to tears. When I was a children's minister, while I was studying for ministry, every time we'd share in a baptism, I would experience the sacred through tears. I had a few of those tears this morning watching your family sing and share with us faith in this way. But I could never fully articulate what it was about that moment that moved me and stirred me so deeply. Only that I knew it meant something. It matters. What we've done here today matters. Proclaiming to the youngest amongst us that we will love him unconditionally. We will journey with him. That matters. Just like how water interconnects us to one another, so does this act of baptism. Because it's not just about the one person who is marked with water, but it's an entire community making commitments when we witness. Today, as we share in and witness the baptism of Mateo, these experiences, these stories that each of us hold become part of his story too. Just like Jesus, there is indeed something in each of our baptisms that propels us out of our own past self and into a new self that is marked each time even more deeply by community. And so today, as we go forth into our days, reminded that Matteo is indeed God's beloved, may we also see this water and all of the water of our lives, including the breath that we breathe, as that source of connection, reminding each and every one of us that you are God's beloved. You have been marked today by water and by love. May we transform the world through it. Amen.